Hi, welcome to What's Happening. Here are the top five stories. At number one, the President General of the Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and the Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Sahad Abubakar III, Monday said it will take decades for the Northwest to overcome banditry and insecurity. He stated this at the Northwest Peace and Security Summit in Katsina State. The Sultan expressed the readiness of the traditional rulers to partner with security agencies and the seven governors of the geopolitical zone to save their region from the numerous problems of banditry and insurgency. He enthused that by the end of the summit, proposals to bring insurgency to the barest minimum for people to go about their lives and businesses will be arrived at. In the last few years, bandits have been on the prowl in Kaduna, Katsina, Zamfara, Sokoto, Kebi, Kano and Jigawa states. Thousands of people, mostly vulnerable persons, have been killed and displaced by bloodthirsty marauders who mostly disguise as herders. At number two, the Federal Capital Territory FCT Police Command says it has nabbed four suspects in the connection with the murder of retired Brigadier General Uwem Harold Udukwere. The FCT Commissioner of Police, Beneth Igwe, disclosed this while parading the suspects as well as others who committed heinous crimes at the FCT Police Command headquarters in Abuja on Monday. He also declared two suspects wanted in connection with the murder and reiterated the efforts of the command to apprehend them. He further said the command has been able to arrest some wanted notorious kidnappers and their accomplices, one of which is Issa Muhammad, an SKP from Kuje Correctional Center and the chief informant. The commissioner lamented that some criminals will commit crimes in the FCT and escape to other states, making it difficult for them to get caught. He, however, said that no matter what, the command is committed to upholding high security standards in the city. According to an earlier statement by the Federal Capital Territory Police Command, Udukwere was killed during an armed robbery attack on his estate on Saturday morning. At number three, ShopRite has announced its decision to close one of its branches in Abuja starting on June 30, 2024. This development was communicated through a circular signed by the Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Folakemi Fadamsi, on behalf of the retail supermarket. The circular outlined the reasons behind this decision, attributing it to the prevailing financial situation in the country and the challenging business climate. The statement expressed deep regret for any inconveniences caused by the closure, but emphasized that it is a necessary step for the long-term growth and sustainability of the organization. In addition to announcing the closure, the circular indicated that the company would be conducting a review of its accounting records over the next 60 days to ensure that all outstanding balances are settled. At number four, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been freed from prison in the United Kingdom and is traveling home to Australia after he pleaded guilty to a single charge of breaching the espionage law in the United States. Assange will plead guilty to one count of conspiring to obtain and disclose classified U.S. national defense documents according to a filing in the U.S. District Court for the Northern Mariana Islands. He was free from the UK's high-security Belmarsh prison on Monday and taken to the airport where he flew out of the country. Assange will appear at a court in Saipan at the U.S. Pacific Territory at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, where he will be sentenced to 62 months already served. At number five, the Albanian Football Federation says UEFA has banned its player Merlin Daku for two games at the European Championships after he led fans in the nationalist chant. Daku took a megaphone after Albania's 2-2 draw with Croatia Wednesday in Hamburg and joined in chanting slogans against Serbia and North Macedonia. The Football Association of Serbia said it would leave the tournament if UEFA did not punish their incident. The Albanian Football Federation also said Sunday that the Union of European Football Association imposed fines totaling €47,250 for incidents at the game, where its fans joined Croatian fans in chanting an anti-Serb slogan. That's it on what's happening. Thanks for watching.